So, tomorrow is quite a big day for Tekken, uh, I'd say at least. We are getting the trailer for Heihachi Mishima. Now, I don't know if this trailer is going to show off everything that Heihachi is going to be bringing to the game, whether that be gameplay or story. I would like to think so, considering Tekken's been very quiet since Lydia came out, and I do think they need to start bringing some of the hype back, because it has been a little bit bare bones. Now, because Tekken 8 as a fighting game is a good product, you know, minus obviously the microtransactions and what's going on with the store, the actual gameplay is a lot of fun, and the story mode was a lot of fun as well. I really, really enjoyed the story, especially the climax of the story. It felt like a very big time uh, anime shonen style fight. And I was happy with it. Now Heihachi is the biggest character that you could have brought to this game that exists in the Tekken franchise. We're not talking about guest characters and what they can bring, but the actual core Tekken roster that has existed through all Tekken games, Heihachi is the biggest character you can bring. So a lot of people feel like uh, Harada and the Tekken team have played their trump card already. And I'm of the mindset that they did the right thing, but they've only done the right thing if they follow through with this. You can't bring out Heihachi and not bring out another banger and another banger. And it's not like Tekken doesn't have the characters to spare. Now, a lot of people have been talking about story integrity in Tekken and uh, Heihachi coming back hurts that. I'm not of that opinion. I think a lot of people feel that way because Tekken, Se Tekken 7 was marketed to be this really big end of the Mishima saga. I only think it was marketed that way. Uh, well, if I'm being completely honest, it was a little bit deceptive, obviously, with the way it was put together. But I do think that Mortal Kombat had a big part to play in that because Mortal Kombat changed the way we looked at fighting games. When MK9 came out, even though MK vs DC did it first, it was really in MK9 where it sort of exploded into the fighting game scene where story modes were told in almost a movie-like format. Now, we always had stories in fighting games, but they were never really taken seriously. And it wasn't until Mortal Kombat stepped up and changed the game that other fighting game developers were sort of looking around going, okay, we need to step it up. And one of the people, one of the developers that stepped it up uh, was Tekken and, uh, and the Tekken team. So Tekken 7 was the first one where we really got a like Netflixy style story mode for Tekken. You know, it wasn't on the level of Mortal Kombat's production value. I enjoyed it more personally, but that's only because I am more invested in the Mishima saga. Objectively speaking, MK9 did a much better job telling their story across the board, but Personally, for me, I enjoyed Tekken more. So that's the only reason that I think that they really expanded it with Tekken 7. Now, from what I understand of Tekken 7, Tekken 7 had a small budget because Tekken Tag 2 didn't do very well. It almost killed the Tekken franchise. And so when Tekken 7 came out, I think the expectations were there for it to do better than Tekken Tag 2, but I don't think they expected it to do what it did. Tekken 7 really saved Tekken. And so going into Tekken 8, they had a much bigger budget. Now, I think that marketing and marketing the end of the Mishima saga, although it was deceptive, it was probably the right thing to do because I had a lot of people going, OK, well, we've always known about Kazuya and, and uh, Heihachi's uh, beef. We kind of want to tune in to see how it all concludes. What I think happened with the Tekken team personally is I think they saw how successful Tekken 7 was and how successful they could make Tekken 8. And they probably felt like we could do something with Heihachi. This is our most iconic character. We could probably do something with this guy and we can move him into uh, the new story. Now, I know, again, a lot of people are not happy with it. Personally, I've seen the Mishimas die so many times that I didn't really care that they brought him back. I thought it was the right thing to do. A lot of people have said they wanted to come back later on. To me, that's like, that's like apples and oranges. It's like, okay, well, you don't care that he's coming back. You just care about when he comes back. So that again goes into what I was talking about when I'm saying that it's good to play the trump card now because Tekken has had a bit of a retention problem. If we look at the Steam numbers of Tekken versus Street Fighter, Street Fighter is absolutely destroying it. And ever since they dropped Akuma, it's been banger after banger, right? It's been Bison after that, now they're getting Terry Bogard. I don't know how people feel about Eleanor and Mai, but we'll see as time goes on. Mai will probably be positively received, but don't imagine Eleanor. That was a bit of a weird choice, but. It should have been Dudley in my opinion, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So in my opinion, I think Tekken needs to pull the trigger now. I don't think they should wait. I think they should play their trump card, which they have done, and then release fan favorites. Now, I'll be completely honest with you. Like I said, I care about the story, but I think there's loads of ways that you can craft a wacky story. I'm not playing this game to get an interstellar level story. I'm not playing this game to even get a, you know, a, a Mortal Kombat level story, though Mortal Kombat does get wacky from time to time. I'm playing it to like really 
see the big fights between the Mishimas, how much more ridiculous can they make it? I do want it to go in a direction that makes sense, but in terms of reviving characters, I have no issue with that because again it's a fighting game and I think fighting games sort of stand separately from other games when it comes to storytelling. If you've got a game like Uncharted, right, let's say that you kill Nathan Drake, or let's use The Last of Us uh, because they actually killed Joel in it. You can't bring Joel back now. That's it. Because the way The Last of Us is told, it's told to almost be realistic, right? That virus that exists in The Last of Us is a real virus, right? And it infects insects, predominantly ants. And uh, the idea in The Last of Us is that the virus, you know, mutates and it starts infecting us. And the way they tell The Last of Us story is to mirror what would happen in our lives if that virus ever came to be. It's the same with like The Walking Dead, you know, once you, you killed Shane in The Walking Dead in season two, you can't bring Shane back. That's it, he's gone. There's no uh, revival in these sort of shows. They Again, they try to portray it as real life and there's real consequences here. Tekken's never done that. Tekken's got fighting kangaroos, fighting bears, devils, robots that are fighting each other, people climbing out of volcanoes. It's never been a serious game. So when people got upset about Heihachi Return, I was like, it's not that deep though, because it's not that serious. And moving Tekken into a serious uh, area of storytelling, I don't know if that is even the right move. I do want it to be coherent, but in terms of revival, they've already established that. So if that's your checking out point, you should have checked out a long time ago. That's just my opinion. So they brought Heihachi back. Now, before I get into where I want the story to go, if we talk about this trailer a little bit, I think this trailer is a little bit of bait and switch. I think it's got a bit of bait and switch going on. There's parts in this trailer, there's one specific part in this trailer where I was like, that is not Heihachi Mishima. And it's not the part where the monks are all training together. It's the part when it zooms in to sort of like, we assumed it was like a volcano at first, but when we took a better look at it, it looked like a temple had exploded. I think that the guy that initially walks out of the fire is not Heihachi. Because if you look at this video, when you look at Heihachi in the distance, you can see his devil horn looking hair, right? Heihachi's got a very distinct look. If I present the silhouette of Heihachi in front of anybody, they'll be able to point out and go, that's Heihachi Mishima. Because of the hair, makes it very, very obvious. But if you go and watch that trailer and you look at the guy walking out of the smoke and fire. That's not Heihachi's silhouette. The guy's bald. There's no hair there whatsoever. And then when it zooms in closer and the smoke clears, then you can see the silhouette. So I think that this trailer is a bait and switch. I think something else is going on with this story. And I'm very excited to see where they take it because there's a lot of places they can take it. There's a full bodied render of Ancient Ogre in the game. Ancient Ogre was one of the uh, centerpieces of the Netflix anime that came out. They've made a big point of what he did to John and Jin when they were young. In Tekken 8, the Yakushima stage is there with the symbols that, you know, make you... Uh, not, there's Yakushima and there's also the temple. I can't remember what it's called, but it's got the symbols that Ogre has. I believe that they are hinting at an Ogre return. I believe Ancient Ogre is going to return. It would make sense to me the Ancient Ogre returns. Because now you've got all of the strongest characters in the franchise, apart from Jim Pachi, right? You've got Heihachi has returned. You've got Kazuya. You've got Jin. You've got Reina. You've also got Lars there, right? Jun is apparently alive now as well. We're not entirely sure, but they're kind of points out the fact that she returned at the end of the game. The only one missing is Jim Pachi, which I would like them to bring back. I don't know how you would bring Jim Pachi back since he literally turned to sand. But I think it's it's prime time to bring Jim Pachi back. The reason that I say this as well is that I feel like we're reaching the end of this saga of Tekken because recently uh, Michael Murray and Harada were asked when they would retire and they said after Tekken 9. When Tekken 9 concludes, they'll no longer be there, which would make sense because the life cycle of a Tekken game is like 10 years and Harada will be like 60 by the time Tekken 9 comes out. And then if he, if he goes on to work on that game, it'll be another 10 years, he'll be 70. So. It makes sense for Harada to step down after Tekken 9. The Mishimas are his babies, right? Those are characters that he created, that he has cultivated. It would make more sense to me to end the Mishima saga, actually end the Mishima saga, even though I would, I would still be against it personally, but it would make more sense to end it with Harada because the Mishimas are Harada's children, essentially. And I think the perfect way to do that is to build a story of the Mishimas going into Tekken 9. Now, I don't know how you would end the Mishima saga in a meaningful way since they've killed each other so many times, right? Kazuya throws Heihachi, well, let's start even right at the beginning. Heihachi throws Kid Kazuya off a cliff. Kazuya comes back, throws Heihachi off a cliff. 
Heihachi comes back, throws Kazuya off a cliff. Skip 20 years into the future, Kazuya comes back. Uh, Jin and uh, Jin gets tied up. Jin then Jin, uh, actually in Tekken 3, Jin got shot in the face. He survived. And then in Tekken 5, Jinpachi apparently gets blown to pieces. That's not true. In Tekken 6, Jin jumps into Azazel's chamber. Apparently his body had turned to sand. That wasn't true. Tekken 7, Heihachi is thrown to a volcano. He's dead. Apparently not. So I don't know how you meaningfully put an end to the Mishima saga anymore. I don't know how that works. What I do know is that if Harada is going to be leaving, it would make more sense for me that they end it when Harada leaves. So my hope is that the Heihachi trailer not only reveals to us his gameplay, obviously we're going to see that, but it, it talks a little bit more about where the Mishima saga is going to go. Because obviously it's in full swing again. We don't know if Heihachi is going to come back on beef. We don't know what Kazuya's plans are going to be now that he no longer has a devil form. We don't know how Jun is going to have an effect on him and we don't know what Jin is going to do going forward. There's a road here to tell something that's fun and meaningful going into Tekken 9. I think that you would revolve that around Ancient Ogre since they've mentioned him quite a lot. He's a fan favourite. He's another character where I feel like he would really push sales. Ultimately, you want to release characters that are really going to push sales. So I think you just keep the ball rolling. Now for the last character of the Tekken 8 uh, season 1, I think should probably be a guest character. Because even though I really want Ancient Ogre and Jinpachi to come back, you can't really top hype when it comes to Heihachi. You'd have to go outside of the franchise because Heihachi is that guy in Tekken. So for me, I don't mind where they want to go. Obviously, I want it to be exciting. I don't mind. I know Itadori's name has been thrown around a lot as of late. Uh, King J brought it up to me and more people were saying it in my stream chat. They want to see JJK representation. JJK is like the hottest anime on the planet right now, so that would make sense. I would personally prefer Yujiro or Oma from Kengan Ashura. Kiryu would have been my pick, but with Virtua Fighter apparently being on the horizon, I don't think that's going to be the case. So a guest character for me makes sense. I don't want them to overwhelm the game with guest characters. I think three is max in a roster this big. You know, they've got like 34 characters. So for me, three guest characters, is, that's as far as I'd be happy to go. I don't want to go down the route of Mortal Kombat, I think that's absurd. Going into Season 2, I think they should change it from 4 to 6. Waiting this long for characters, I know that a lot of work goes into a Tekken character because of how big the movesets are and how they need to make them work within the systems. But if they can and they do have the resources, especially because they're riddling the game with microtransactions, so if people are actually buying them, then I think they should give us 6 characters. And if they're going to start off Season 2 with a bang, you start off with the boss character, right? You start off with maybe the character that's going to move the story story going forward, the return of Ancient Ogre. Now the previous Ancient Ogre was killed, but they did take his DNA. Heihachi uh, took uh, Ancient Ogre's DNA after he was killed and they took it to a Mishima research facility as far as I'm aware. And so you could use that, you know, the, the people that are working at the Mishima Zaibots or G Corporation, whoever's got the DNA is now successful in bringing Ancient Ogre. So we get a new version of Ancient Ogre, maybe a more powered up version. You drop him as the first DLC character. The second DLC character for Season 2 I would drop is Jinpachi Mishima. I would drop Jinpachi Mishima as a balancing act to Ancient Ogre in terms of storytelling. Let's say this Ancient Ogre is so powerful that none of the Mishimas are able to take him on even as a collective, right? Let's say they all realize that we shouldn't be fighting each other right now. We need to take care of this Ancient Ogre threat before he destroys the planet so we can get back to trying to take over the planet. Let's say they all fail. Let's even say Devil Rainer fails. Let's say Devil Rainer's devil form gets taken away from her, you know, because Ancient Ogre can absorb abilities apparently. So maybe he absorbs her devil form. So there's no more devils left. Maybe Jim Pachi is somehow revived in maybe the same way that they, they revived Heihachi and they bring him back as like, yo, we need your help. We don't like you. I don't like you. You don't like me, but we need your help. You're that the, the final piece uh, that we need to overpower this beast. And they all go to War of Ancient Ogre. So you drop him as season two second character. So that leaves you with four slots. Now, people have said that Marduk and Fakuram are in the bundles. Those are two of my main characters, but people don't like them. So I don't know where you put them. I don't know. If I'm being objective here, even though I want Marduk back because he's my, no, other than Jinpachi, an ancient ogre, Marduk was my guy. People are really clamoring for Armor King. So I think the third character should be Armor King because the story to tell there of Armor King is always a very cool character. There's been ongoing story with King and, and Armor King and, and Marduk. And I think you tell a story with Armor King in a way that makes people more excited to see Marduk because you could tell a story where Marduk 
turns back into a bad guy and there's just all this beef going on and then you drop the fourth character as Marduk. If people are opposed to that, then you could you could just put Anna in the game. Everyone loves Anna. I think people have been talking about Wang Jin Rei a bit, so he could be in the second season as well. It all depends on where this story expansion goes, but I do think that there is more than meets the eye when it comes to what they dropped. We're going to see tomorrow, hopefully. I hope they give us more than just gameplay because we are starved for content over on the Tekken side. Uh, they're taking way too long to do anything. There's too many updates to the store and not enough to the actual core game. So it'll be interesting to see. I think there's something else going on. But I want to know what you guys all think about this. I want to know where you stand uh, with Tekken right now. Are you excited for Heihachi? When I put the post up, a lot of people were excited for him. Again, I've told you from my perspective, narratively speaking, Tekken's always been very wacky to me. So in terms of like reviving characters in fighting games, I don't really have a problem with it. I'd have a problem with it in other games like Uncharted or The Last of Us or, I don't know, Dead Space or... I'm playing Space Marine 2 right now, but the story in Warhammer is so massive that I don't even know where to start. There's novels, the detective novels, there's a whole other things going on. There's like magic and religious stuff and, and uh, science. I, I don't know where to begin with that. Maybe that's a bad example. Anyway, you get my point. There's certain games where bringing a character back, I feel that hurts the, the, the story narratively. I think that... If you thought that before, you should have been checked out by Tekken 4. <laughs> I don't think they're going to stop reviving these guys, at least when Harad is there. So let me know what you guys think about that. I'm excited for the trailer. Put your predictions in the comments section below. And uh, if you've made it this far, then next week on my stream, I'm going to be doing another giveaway. I will announce the game on the stream for the giveaway. Uh, there's going to be much more codes this time. Uh, the stream that we did uh, on Sunday, uh, the 22nd of September, just gone. I gave four codes away for Final Fantasy 16, two on Steam and two on PS5. This time we have about 15 codes for another game. So if you want a chance to win those, come by my stream on Sunday. I will also be streaming tomorrow because Chaos Range drops and I think I've been I've managed to get my hands on it. I don't know yet. I don't know yet, but I think somebody's come through for me. I managed to get my hands on it. We'll see. Uh, so that stream will be up tomorrow. There'll be no giveaways on that stream. It'll be on Sunday. So I'll catch you guys then. Take care of yourselves and peace.